ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for this evening, Australian television personality, Jane Matheson. Hello. Yes, I am Australian TV personality, James Matheson. Uh, I think that was meant to say uh, Australian TV royalty. Um, can we fix that? No? Too late? It's been recorded. I do love this, though, this runway you've put out for me. It feels a bit like Melbourne Fashion Week. <laughs> okay, obviously I need to work on that. How's everyone feeling? <laughs> Good. You should be pumped up. This is big. This is big. Some of the best and brightest young filmmakers in the entire country are in this room right now. Hundreds of entries from around the country were submitted and the judges poured through to find the absolute best. So look around at each other. This is the pick of the crop. Top of the heap. Pick of the bunch. You should be feeling amped and pumped. I'm excited to be here. I have in the past hosted the Logie Awards, the ARI Awards, compared the Australia Day Live Awards, and of all the events that I've hosted, this is one of them. <laughs> I've done this for the last four years, and I keep coming back because it's one of the few events that keeps having me back. <laughs> Um, that and also, I live in Sydney, and so any chance to get away from my children for a night, <laughs> I'm up, I'm signed up. Um, has anyone got kids, young kids in the room? Yeah, a few of you. Who's got dogs? <laughs> Did you see the difference in reactions <laughs> between people <laughs> who have dogs? Um, I shouldn't joke. I've got two gorgeous daughters. Uh, they are quite young, though, but I'm looking forward in the morning to sleeping past... 20 past 5 in the morning. Um, they're an absolute joy, but everything's a bit of a battle. Put your shoes on. No! Put your jacket on. No! Get out the door. No! That's just my wife. Um, <laughs> uh, the other day I took them to school and it had been a particularly frustrating morning and there was a sign near their school. It said, watch for small children. And I thought, you know what? I would take that trade. <laughs> that is not a bad deal. Uh, I hope they're watching. They're probably not. It's past their bedtime. Um, because this isn't just an award show. This is a TV broadcast. And it's being screened all over the globe on BAFTA.com. And the people putting that broadcast together, as you can see around the room, are actual students studying at Bonn University. They are the ones behind the cameras, in the control room, Doing the audio, running the auto cue. That is how extraordinary this course is. So it's going to be an amazing night and it's going to be in their hands. So we look forward to it being a big success. And if you're watching at home, say hi to you. Um, my wife, if you're watching, put the kids to bed. Um, is it their bedtime? I'm not even sure. Um, the important thing is... This is the 24th year that BAFTA have done this. Next year is the 25th anniversary of probably the biggest young filmmakers competition in the country. So it's a massive, massive event. Next year we celebrate 25 years. And this year we celebrate 30 years as Bond University. So big ups for Bond University for getting that far. Um, and I've been hosting for most of those years it feels like uh, tonight as well as our celebrations we're going to celebrate the amazing art form that is filmmaking and celebrate the achievements of some of our most talented nominees tonight's awards celebrates the craft of filmmaking there's some special awards and there's also some genre awards that allow us to tip our hats to very specific types of filmmaking and you'll see them throughout the evening as well as that, there is our big award, the overall BAFTA Best Filmmaker, and that's a scholarship award. The filmmaker who wins that will win a full scholarship to study the Bachelor of Film and Television right here at Bonn University, a massive prize and something that has propelled students who've won it previously into incredible careers in filmmaking. So that's all coming up. Now, if you want to take part, you can tonight. 
by voting. Now, the judges have decided on all the major awards, but you guys and you watching at home also get a chance to play your role. Just by going to buffter.com, you can vote for the Red Bull People's Choice Award. Now, this award allows you to contribute to the nominee's special night by having your say and hopefully awarding them with recognition for what you think is your favourite award of the evening. And of course, brought to you by Red Bull, the winner receives a can of <laughs> Red Bull. No, that's not right, sorry. They get a case, a case of <laughs> Red Bull. So it really uh, dug deep there. I don't think that's true, but we'll uh, talk to them later on throughout the night. Now, you've still got another 60 minutes, I think, to vote for your favourite film, and you can do so online at bufta.com.au. Now, you can also take part tonight by sharing photos. Has anyone taken any photos tonight? I'd like you to take some more and tag them Bufta at Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. In fact, we should probably take one right now, I think. Uh, what about you guys here? Uh, okay, ready? Three, two, one. Say Bufta! Bufta! Yeah, not our best work, I won't lie. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to post that anyway, hashtag BAFTA, and you'll be able to check that out online. We'll actually look at some of them later on as well. Anyway, it's a magical night. Are we ready to go? <laughs> Let's begin with our first award of the evening. It is Best Achievement in Comedy. And to present the award, welcome the director of the Gold Coast Film Festival. It's Lucy Fisher. <coughs> Well, this is quite the year to be a clown. From slapstick to dad humour, making us laugh is the perfect way to captivate an audience. Com comedy writing requires timing, emotional intelligence, and hours of gruelling, finger-crushing writing, unless that is if you're Tina Fey or Adam Sandler. Being able to bring genuine joy and allowing us to escape through laughter is a precious gift and should not go unnoticed. So, for the next comedian, clown, joker, or jester, the best comedy film award goes to the nominee who not only managed to tickle our funny bones, but also created a captivating film. The nominees for best achievement in comedy are... Girls Just Wanna Have Sun, by Maduma Thalaya from Hunting Tower School, Victoria. And they make sure that I stay energised during the night so I don't like die in my sleep or whatever. There's actually a pretty big photosynthesizer community here in Melbourne and recently I've taken a sapling under my wing to, you know, guide her with her growth and like show her the ropes and stuff. Australia High by Oliver John from De La Salle College, Melbourne, Victoria. You know, I'm in Roman video, I made an Roman video. But why? You know, so... Victoria House can have more... <clears throat> Wait, is this because New South Wales House has more students than Victoria does? A little bit. I Need Space by Catherine Shepherd from St Mary's Anglican Girls' School, Western Australia. Stop butting into my audio log. Make your own. That's what they told us to do. We need to obey and complete this mission. And would you shut up about your stupid bok choy? <laughs> And the winner is Catherine Shepherd from St Mary's Anglican Girls. I'd like to say a thank you to Michaela and Jake, my actors, who actually didn't know each other and I tied them together and threw them down a dune. Um, also my teachers, Miss Watts and Miss McLeod, thank you so much for your support. Um, my friends and family and thank you Bon for this opportunity, it's amazing. Thank you. 
Now let's take a look at Catherine's film. Day 17, colonist 35, outer eastern quadrant, Titan colony. Honestly, I never thought it would come to this. However, I am persevering with project relationship rebuild with colonist 36 as directed. I have high expectations of success. Relationship rebuild as yet unsuccessful, unable to report any reduction in feeling of hatred or anger towards my lying, cheating partner. And I would also like to state for the record that I'm the first person to ever successfully grow bok choy on time. Stop butting into my audio log. Make your own. That's what they told us to do. We need to obey and complete this mission. And would you shut up about your stupid bok choy? <laughs> Fine. Outer East Squadron, Titan Colony. Still undergoing mandatory relationship rebuild. I made one mistake, one mistake, and you'll never let me forget it. It's not like I'm going to see him again. You told me about him as the rocket was taking off. What was I meant to do? Jump off the rocket? Although, might have been less painful for me. I can still hear the director's voice now. Well, this is a small colony, and problems in your personal life can affect the community. We all need to get along. Our hands are tied. My hands are tied more like it. Hold on. What's that? Is that a sandstorm? Quick, get up! We need to make it back to base camp. Before it's too late. Sandstorm's the least of my worries. We need to work together to stand. Work together? That'd be a first. Sandstorm! It's still your fault. No, it's all your fault. It's your fault we're even here in the first place. And where do you think you're going? Back to base camp, we need to get it before the storm hits. What do you mean, my fault? Why is everything always my fault? You're the one that told the director about our relationship problems. Not the therapy. It's your fault I volunteered as a Titan colonist. Lou, it'll be an adventure. It'll be a new start for us. You'll have the time of your life. Oh, you know how much I hate travelling. Quick, the sandstorm is getting closer. But anyway, Base camp is that way. Base camp is this way. This way. That way. This way. I have an exceptional sense of direction. Base camp is this way. Really? You have an awful sense of direction. You once got lost in our suburb and there are only five streets. And I'm telling you, if we go that way, we'll be walking around the entire moon just to get back to where we started. Base camp is that way. The solar panel field is that way. The other colonists are that way. And your stupid bok choy is that way. Meaning we need to go that way. Being hit by a sandstorm would be a blessing right now. Let me down! This is the wrong way! This is why we need your relationship rebuild in the first place! Wait, is that my bok choy? <laughs> Lou, my darling, you were right. Base camp really is that way. Will Will ever find happiness again? Looks like Lou's back to her old ways. Oh no, not Will's bok choy. I Need Space was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Special genre that.
Uh, now, up on stage is where a lot of the action will be happening tonight, but also a big portion of the events will occur here at the BAFTA Hub. Basically, the BAFTA Hub is an interactive stage where we can talk to some of the guests and also find out what's happening in and around the television broadcast tonight. So it's a great opportunity to show you here in our auditorium and also people at home exactly what happens when we put together a live broadcast like this one. Now, an event like this can't happen with a lot of sponsors and supporters getting behind it and a big supporter of the event every year is Gold Coast City Council. And from the council, please welcome to the BAFTA Hub, wow. Herman Voster, how are you? <laughs> Uh, look, I'm sensational. I knew I never liked bok choy, <coughs> and I've had all of that validated, so it's a good night. I'm feeling good. Okay. Uh, you cho chose the chicken, I imagine. I'd, well, I'm not sure if it was foisted on me, but it was good. It yeah. was good. You'll take what you can get, mate. Oh, absolutely. Uh, now, you are a councilman in the 11th district, is that right? That's right. So I look after all of Ravina, all of Varsity Lakes, and Bond University. So. Um, yeah, this is close to home. Now, obviously tonight it's about creative students, it's about ideas that are pushing the boundaries. The council has been very supportive of not only these awards, but also creative industries in general. Yeah, look, I think what we really want to make sure that we're doing is telling the Gold Coast story from a Gold Coast perspective. And the only way to do that is to have Gold Coast based storytellers. So supporting the Bufters is a surefire way of making sure that people learn, about the Gold Coast, become ingratiated in it, and hopefully find a job here, or if not, become ambassadors in the industry. So, well worth supporting. Fantastic. Well, I sounded like a politician, didn't I? You were right on brand. I know, I Absolutely. know. Absolutely. It's tragic. You've been doing it too long. <laughs> <laughs> Slap on the wrist. But no, it's really great to support. Amazing to have you. Always wonderful to have the support of the council. I hopefully enjoy the films tonight. Now, as I mentioned, the BAFTA Hub is a great chance to meet people who are supporting the awards, but it's also a great chance for us to interact with all the elements that make tonight happen. For example, as we talked about when we opened the show, socials, where we get a whole heap of pictures from the night. This is one of the press conferences that happened earlier this evening. And of course, some of the photos that people have taken and posted throughout the night. No, they're just the same three photos back and forth. But I'm sure more will come in as the night progresses. Get hashtag BAFTA if you can. Um, and also another interactive element is the People's Choice Countdown. As I told you at the start of the show, you can have a chance to decide one of tonight's winners. And you've got 33 minutes, 58 seconds. So if you haven't made your choice, head to bafta.com.au. And we'll head back to the BAFTA Hub a little bit later on and show you some of the interactive elements of tonight and just how it's all put together. That's coming up, but right now, we might have a look at some of tonight's real special nominees. Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Experimental Film, please welcome from Screen Queensland, content assistant and Bond Film and Television alumnus, Bella Sheevy. Experimental films are the most interesting category and often the most ignored by mainstream audiences. 
Skeptics of the genre claim that experimental films are made when a filmmaker accidentally can creates a confusing mess and claims it was intentional. We would argue, however, that the genre is naturally raw, unfiltered, and the most terrifying to create. It is through experimentation that we discover fresh ways to challenge an audience via other mediums rather than narrative. The best experimental film nominees. Corruption by Helen Mullen from Bow Desert State High School, Queensland. The Call of the Wild by Jemima Patch Taylor from St. Rita's College, Queensland. by Susanna Steele from Santa Sabina College, New South Wales. And the award for Best Experimental Film goes to... Susanna Steele from Santa Sabina College in New South Wales. I just want to say a huge thank you to Bond University for this fantastic opportunity um, and thank you for including an experimental category because uh, not too many student competitions um, include them. Just wanted to say a huge thank you to every single person who helped um, with my film. Thank you to my teachers, in particular Ms Stewart for getting me into competitions in the first place and of course Mr Walker, thank you for all of the support and feedback that you've given me this year. Just wanted to say a um, special thank you to um, Karen and Michael Steele for all the support that they've given me over the years and of course to my family. Thanks Rowan for being my guinea pig in all of my test uh, shoots and of course my parents. Thank you for all the support that you give me. Thank you. Congratulations again, and now for the film.
Presenting the award for best achievement in editing, please welcome the director of Essential Crew, Laura Cleland. Being an editor is like a kid building, building with Lego. Even though you have a script to help you, nothing can prepare you for the feeling of excitement and dread as the director dumps a bunch of pieces into your lap and says, make it work. The Best Achievement in Editing Award celebrates the nominees who built amazing films, endured sleepless nights and consumed an unhealthy amount of caffeine. So the nominees for Best Achievement in Editing are Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School in Queensland for his film Mates, Ben Gimby from Mandara Catholic College in Western Australia for his film Aviva Blackout, and Ebony Cunningham from St Mary's Anglican Girls School in Western Australia for her film Terra Nullius. And the award for Best Achievement in Editing goes to... Aviva Blackout, Ben Gimby from Mandara Catholic College in Western Australia. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Bond University, for having us. It's been a lot of fun, and the food's been very good, got to say. Um, I just want to say a few thank yous. Uh, firstly, to my mate Tom, because he told me to. He uh, spent a few hours every night uh, helping me film in the middle of the street at night. Quite scary when you're two teenage boys. Um, I want to thank my teacher, Mr. Hall, who's been nothing but supportive and has helped me do so much, and has, you know, he's the whole reason I did BAFTA, so really got to thank him for that when I get back to school. And um, then, of course, I want to say a special thank you to my dad. Uh, you had to deal with me all the way for, like, what, a five-hour plane trip out here? So thank you for that. And he, you were also an amazing help, especially when I had to hide a knife in public. That was very scary. So, yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you. Have a good night. Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Cinematography, please welcome the Managing Director of LEMAC, Sue Greenshields. It's an honour for me to hear, be here tonight to uh, present the award to uh, the next generation, I hope, of our magnificent uh, cinematographers that Australia is just so famous for. And so I hope... Uh, you uh, are able to deliver uh, some of those magic images that we've seen the success around the world with, with our current uh, cinematographers deliver. The craft um, is very dear to my heart. Uh, LEMAC was started 40 years ago by uh, a cinematographer uh, who just happened to be my husband. And over those years, we've worked with many great cinematographers. 
And I can tell you that you will require to be uh, passionate uh, above all else, uh, visionary, uh, you're going to have to be a leader, you're going to have to be a collaborator to deliver those wonderful um, visions, uh, to tell the story for the directors that you work with. And I wish uh, today's nominees every success and I hope to see you in the future uh, coming through the doors of LEMAC. And I, without further ado, I should announce the nominees. Uh, Ebony Cunningham from St Mary's Anglican Girls School in Western Australia for her film Terra Nullius. Henry Johnson from Scotch College in Victoria for his film Sally Jones, an Australian farmer. Suzanne Steele from Santa Sabina College in New South Wales for her film Voir le Voir. And the award goes to Suzanne Steele from Santa Sabina College in New South Wales for her film Voir le Voir. Too. So, um, yeah, I just want to um, say thank you again to um, everyone that helped, thanks to my teachers again and to my parents. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back your host, James Matheson. I come up on stage. You know, I have that at home every time I walk into the house. Yes, I'm here, I've arrived. Um, so, tonight's been fun so far. We've got about 15 more minutes if you want to vote for the People's Choice Award. You can do that by going to bufter.com uh, and vote for your favourite film. If you have one you want to get behind, you can also look at all the films there. It's a great opportunity to support because obviously the judges have poured through all the videos and they've found their favourite, but this is your chance to find yours. That's still to come. As well as that, we've got some amazing music from a wonderfully talented singer-songwriter named Stephanie Dash. She's coming up, an incredible vocalist from the Gold Coast and a former Bond University alumni. That's also on the way. And, of course, the big award at the end of the night. That's still to come. Plus, a lot of you haven't had your dinner roles um, so there's a great opportunity to hoe into them by uh, this time of night I think the butter has already pre-warmed so it's a really great combo to take part in there um, I'm here as I said at the start of the night because I love the idea that this is an award show that supports young filmmakers I think uh, as parents of young creative filmmakers you might be worried oh my god I don't really understand what you're doing what you're passionate about but I'm here anyway um, but the reality is the creative industries employ over 600,000 people in Australia it's a multi-billion dollar industry whether it's filmmaking television editing social media um, the creative industries employ a vast number of people and it is such a legitimate growing and exciting career industry to be part of. Um, I'm here because I believe in the power of telling stories and also I'm a massive fan of films themselves. Uh, I try and go to the films at the cinema uh, once or twice a month if possible and uh, one of the things I've noticed at my local cinema is they've now put up a sign saying a $50 fee for anyone who soils the seats in any way watching a film, which is kind of crazy. So I now just pay my $50 up front um, so I can just have the time of my life. Um, but back to filmmaking. There aren't many competitions like this. That's why this is so exciting. This is why this is such an incredible event to be part of. So you should be very proud of yourselves. And I'm excited to be back for another year. Now, as I said, still a lot of great awards, a lot of great live music coming up, but right now we're going to head into a different sort of category. It is the award for Best Documentary. Cool. 
Presenting the award for best achievement in documentary, please welcome television producer and head of publications at the Queensland Writers' Centre, Sandra Macarez. Documentary filmmakers trudge through the dirt, chase the heart-throbbing stories, and shine the spotlight on parts of the world that often go unnoticed. With the rise of on-demand services, it has never been a better time to break into documentary filmmaking, the documentary filmmaking industry. So, to the future Charles Ferguson or Audrey Mars, continue to seek stories that provoke, illuminate, and challenge us. Don't be afraid to confront the status quo and dig for the truth, no matter how uncomfortable. The nominees for Best Achievement in Documentary are... To Be a Volunteer by Bethany Alex from Hunting Tower School, Victoria. To volunteer and make a difference on a global scale. And a lot of people you know, are very generous and give money, but we're all about doing um, and getting out there and being involved. We want kids to have education because things aren't going to change without that. Sally Jones, an Australian farmer by Henry Johnston from Scotch College, Victoria. The first time that, you know, that this, this warning signs came up to say that he's actually having a breakdown, even though I didn't know what a mental health breakdown was at the time. And that was the beginning of our journey. Mikiamo Maria, Mikiamo Karina by Karina Sarong from Marymount College, Queensland. I feel so safe around her and I just feel, yeah, so warmed and loved. Uh, about comfort and friendliness. I think your smile, your sensitivity and your, your generous nature. for Best Achievement in Documentary goes to Henry Johnston. Hi everyone. Um, I guess my first of all, biggest thanks has to go to Sally, uh, who was the subject of my film. Right from the start when I researched reached out to her, she was so enthusiastic, um, welcoming, kind, um, and just ready to give it a really um, red hot shot at the film. And also to Bufter and the sponsors, being sort of a novice aspiring filmmaker with a really important story to tell, uh, but a really limited audience means that entering it in things like Bufter gives it that further voice in the hope that it will inspire as many people as possible. So thank you, and thanks for that tonight. Congratulations, now let's watch his documentary. My name's Sally Jones, I'm 39 years old and I am in the dairy industry. I grew up on a dairy farm in Lakes Entrance. I've got really fond, vivid memories of growing up here as a little girl and I think I was probably about seven or eight. I remember this one day where we had this dog and the dog was on the back of the ute and my dad was standing there and. I think mum just took this picture of us as little girls um, with dad. Certainly being the eldest of four kids is sometimes you're a bit of a special dad's little girl. And um, yes, yeah, so I had a really close bond with my dad. It, tragically in 2016, he did take his life. When he walked into my kitchen which was about six years ago now he walked in and and he started crying and telling me about a situation that he was in it was very unlike him and I guess that was the first time that you know 
the, this, this warning signs came up to say that he's actually having a breakdown, even though I didn't know what a mental health breakdown was at the time. And that was the beginning of our journey. So we journeyed with Dad for three years, um, trying to help him through that really, really dark time. And it really was walking through a big, deep, dark valley. And I remember exactly where I was on the farm. It was pretty much in this exact spot when the phone call came through that they had found his body. And nothing prepares you for that phone call or for that information. I'd never been affected by grief or tragedy like that before. And it, I probably can only define it and explain it like a knife in your chest where you actually can't breathe. I remember just sort of, you know, collapsing in that moment of just the world had stopped. Out of this adversity, um, I had this absolute desire to want to create some positivity out of my loss and my tragedy, and Gippsland Jersey was birthed. When starting a business, it was um, if we didn't know how to do something, we simply Googled. Thank goodness for Google. And I think certainly um, as you get dig deeper and deeper, things don't change a lot. And I remember ringing um, these people that knew my dad and, and automatically, you know, you have that rapport and that respect because my dad was such a pioneer in the dairy industry and, and I guess that has given some credibility to be able for us to make things happen. The dairy industry really is very male dominated. And I remember attending a meeting in the early days with a head of a dairy company. And on entry to the boardroom, he asked if I'd like a coffee. And I replied, I would absolutely love a coffee. And he said to me, well, you're a woman, there's the kitchen and make me one while you're at it. So currently we are right now in the process of setting up our own milk factory to process the milk. And really exciting for me is that we get to do that in the factory that my dad and my mum and my family built back in the 80s. And so the factory is getting a little bit of a renovation and, and we're excited to um, be able to value add. The thing that I guess sets Gippsland Jersey apart from any other milk is that yes, it's premium Jersey milk, which is full of um, nutritional benefits. But the second one is around our social corporate responsibility and how we do things and how we believe that farmers must be paid a fair price for their milk. We have a commitment to wanting to create social change in rural mental health and suicide prevention. And the third one's kindness. Mental health takes up a lot of um, my time in Gippsland, Jersey, and obviously it's such a big issue, it's rife everywhere. And I think exposing my own children to the realities of what it is to have, you know, being mentally unwell, um, gives them, I guess, hopefully a compassion towards people and humanity. Mental health is real it's just the same as a physical illness. I'd love to see my children grow up and um, truly understand that gender stereotype doesn't exist. I think that if they can understand the role of women and, and how they can play a role in agriculture, hopefully it will inspire them. And you know, I've got a, I've got a daughter who's seven years old and maybe she might be a farmer one day um, and she'll be, she'll be confident in that role. I know there's uh, lots of young women living on farms and hopefully they'll be inspired by seeing our story roll out. For me, I hope to mentor other women and for them to gain confidence and to go out and do big, amazing things. That's what we need and that's what excites me and bring on more stories about amazing women that are, that are contributing. Too many days in the darkness 
without a glimpse of the light running tired and broken and scared but i swear i'll never give up the fight i see you broken and beat head pulled down over your eyes every part of you wants to surrender but darling you were meant to survive Presenting the award for the best Gold Coast filmmaker, please welcome back councillor Herman Vorster. Well, good evening everyone, and I'm looking for the teleprompter, which I've just found in the background. Well, the best Gold Coast filmmaker award is designed to allow a budding filmmaker from the Gold Coast to shine. It's important to encourage local talent to keep working hard right here on the beautiful Gold Coast. It's the best place going. The Gold Coast has recently been home to productions such as Dora and Godzilla. No, it's Dora and Godzilla versus Kong. And next year, Baz Luhrmann will shoot an Elvis Presley film right here on the Gold Coast. We encourage our winner to continue to create films locally as there has never been a better time to be a filmmaker right here on the Gold Coast. And the award for the best Gold Coast filmmaker goes to, it's not on the teleprompter, it's in this hot little envelope, is Karina Sarong from Marymount College here on the Gold Coast. Um, I'd like to thank my film teachers, Miss Lorena Vine and Miss Beth O'Malley, for all your support. I wouldn't be standing up here if it weren't for your inspiration. And to my family, thank you for supporting me and believing in my potential as a filmmaker. And of course, Bond and the BAFTA team for all their hard work to make sure that us filmmakers can um, share our stories. So thank you so much. <laughs>
and after time we go our separate ways let's work it out this little thing don't be scared i'll say yes give me a ring don't let it pass this good thing you know i'm like your mind when you want to sing you know you got to do it i'll be there just like i said you know you gotta do this i've been Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Drama, please welcome the new CEO of Screen Queensland, Kylie Munich. Well, thank you very much. Um, all filmmakers can agree on the one thing, and that is conflict is the key to drama. Drama is in every great film. And that's because it's what keeps audiences engaged. Nothing is more satisfying than watching a character overcome great challenges to complete their goal. Think of Frodo throwing the ring into Mount Doom or Luke defeating Vader, or even a clownfish finding his lost son. Conflict is the hook upon which great stories hang. So tonight's Best Achievement in Drama Award recognises the nominee that kept us engaged in the emotional highs and lows of their story. The nominees for the Best Achievement in Drama are... Ultimatum by Curtis Charlton from Mansfield State High School, Queensland. Terra Nullius by Ebony Cunningham from St Mary's Anglican Girls' School, Western Australia. Mates by Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School, Queensland. There I am waiting with a surprise party. He doesn't like me touching his stuff. I don't know if he'd even want you sneaking in. Hey, I know Frank. He's my best mate. We're partners in crime. Trust me, he'll be impressed. And the winner is Austin McFarlane from Anglican Churchill Grammar School for his film Mates. So 
I've been following BAFTA for a few years now, and every time I'm constantly in awe of the amazing work that the students put in in crafting the event, as well as all the films that the other finalists make. It's really inspirational, so to be standing up here with this award is a huge honor that in no way would have been possible without a number of people I'd like to thank. So to Hayden, Lockie, and Eliza, thanks for making my dialogue sound good. To my brother and sister watching the live stream, hey, thanks for holding the mic. Um, to my FDV teacher, Mr. Stephen Taggart, I would not be standing, standing up here if it wasn't for you. That's not just because you introduced the competition to me. It's because of the countless uh, feedback and advice you've given me over the years since grade nine. Mum and dad, cheers for driving me around. So this award <laughs> belongs to all of you. So thank you very much. And now we'll watch Austin's film. I would do anything for my friend. <laughs> Pete, you meant to catch the ball. <sighs> nice one, Frank. Come on, get back up. Nine nil! Nine nil to the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? 18 years old and still can't catch a ball. Hey, big day tomorrow, right? March 5th, you turn 19. Yeah, that's the one, you know. Grace got us tickets to the game next week. Oh, really? Yeah, so you know, you better get me something good or I'm gonna have to kill you. Oh, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, we, we don't want to repeat of last year. Well, I thought last year's gift was great. Yeah, you getting me a matching pair of socks doesn't really count as a gift. Oh. Yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll make sure. Hey, speak of the devil. Hey, Pete. Frank. Um, so what have you guys been up to? Oh, no, I'm just teaching Pete here how to catch a ball. <laughs> no, watch out! Oh, <laughs> gotta watch out, man. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're off. Oh, well, see you guys. Oh, wait, uh, that's, that's my ball. I know. So, picture this. Frank comes home after his game and walks through the door and there I am waiting with a surprise party. I don't know, um, he doesn't like me touching his stuff. I don't know if he'd even want you sneaking in. Hey, I know Frank. He's my best mate. We're partners in crime. Trust me, he'll be impressed. So I've been out all day getting everything ready. Cake, candles, decorations, got all that so we're good to go. How do you think it's gonna go? How shocked is he going to be? I really want to see how he reacts. It's going to be great. Can you just make sure he doesn't come by? Don't want him coming in while I'm setting up. All right, I'll let you in when you arrive. See you soon. Grace!
What are you doing here? Surprise birthday. But I didn't think you'd be home. Well, how'd you get in? Grace. Oh, right, of course. I think she's out with some friends at the moment. Um, so, you've just been decorating, no nothing else? Yeah, um, what do you think? It, it, it's fine. Pete, <laughs> you nearly gave me a goddamn heart attack. <laughs> Yes, sorry. What? I should go. No, I... Actually... Stay here. Don't move. I've got something for you. Hey! You shouldn't have. Presenting the 2019 BUFTA Tribute, please welcome the Director of Film, Screen and Creative Media at Bond University, Associate Professor Michael Sergi. Good evening, everyone. Over the past few years, the BUFTA Tribute has acknowledged individuals who have made an extraordinary contribution to BAFTA. And this year is no exception. This year's tribute acknowledges such a significant supporter of BAFTA that without their support, BAFTA would return to being the modest event it was prior to 2009. It takes an extraordinary level of support throughout the year to produce a national competition and gala award ceremony of the scale and magnitude of BAFTA. There really is nothing like it in Australia. And for that support, we are truly grateful. So let's have a look at this year's BAFTA tribute.
BAFTA has been running for 24 of Bond University's amazing 30 years. And it might seem somewhat peculiar to pay tribute to a university, but a university is not just buildings and classrooms. A university is people. And it takes well over 100 people contributing throughout the year to make BAFTA happen. From the vice chancellor through to the dean and tonight's chef, chefs and waiters, um, everybody is dedicated to making BAFTA a success. We all want the BAFTA nominees to have an amazing experience tonight because BAFTA is all about amazing student experiences. So in paying tribute to Bond University in the year of its 30th anniversary, we are not simply acknowledging the institution, but also the people who are the heart and soul of this amazing place. To accept the BAFTA tribute on behalf of Bond University, please welcome one of BAFTA's greatest supporters and Bond University's company secretary and general counsel, Michael Dean. the red carpet was there so I knew where to go. Um, thank you very much to those of you who are responsible for awarding this very unworthy recipient of this award. Um, tonight's all about the filmmakers we've been looking at this evening and for the previous 23 years. So cheers to them. Thank you very much. My film is Sally Jones, an Australian farmer. Uh, my film, Australia High. My film's Terra Nullius. My film, Corruption, kind of focuses on the contrast between nature and technology. Right from the start, I had this idea of pursuing the sort of dyna dynamic of women in the country. I think it's really funny when comics take really everyday experiences and they're able to kind of pick up the nuances of it. Animation, uh, part of it is the storytelling, the ability to convey uh, emotions through a medium that doesn't really show particularly human attributes. I'd say the biggest challenge for me personally. It was like really time consuming to take all the photos. I wanted people to be able to relate. My biggest challenge was definitely filming at night. That is a pain. <laughs> oh my God, I never realized how hard it would be. Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Animation, please welcome Hollywood screenwriter Shirley Pierce. Creating animation films is a skilled process that requires extreme patience. Animators need to learn how to move, shape, and create larger-than-life characters that entertain and amaze. The Best Achievement in Animation is a magical award because it acknowledges the, the creative minds that understand the technical process that underpins the creation of animation. Nominees keep stretching, bending, and crafting extraordinary stories. The nominees for the best achievement in animation are... Alfie by Shreya Aurora from Mansfield State High School, Queensland. Hide and Seek by Talisha Lee from Mansfield State High School, Queensland. Best play. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Huh? Ooh. Mark and Fish by Emma Russell from Hunting Tower School, Victoria. And the award for best achievement in animation goes to Emma Russell from Huntington Tower School in Victoria. Thank you to BAFTA for giving us the opportunity to showcase our films tonight and in such a wonderful environment and all to the students who put it on. I'd like to thank everybody who supported me throughout this very tiring process. They would know I didn't sleep for two weeks doing this. It was <laughs> painful because uh, I was learning and learning very hard how to actually do it. So thank you to Miss Beale, my media teacher, for all her support during this time, making sure I ate regular meals. And <laughs> yes, and to my classmates and my friends for all their support as well. It was lovely being with you. And mostly to my parents for coming with me tonight and for making sure that I was able to achieve what I did. Thank you. Congratulations.
Presenting the award for best school, please welcome the proprietor of Rustom Music, Russell Stork. Okay, uh, passion is such a motivating force. We are aware that the film industry is tough, but it's not impossible to achieve your dreams. But where passion is built, where do our nominees get their encouragement and endless support? Well, the Best School Award acknowledges the institutions and the teachers that push their students to achieve their aspirations. This award goes to a school that not only supports its students, but has demonstrated its dedication to BAFTA through its students' contributions. The nominees for Best School Award are Hunting Tower School, Victoria, Hunting Tower School, Victoria. Mansfield State High School, Queensland. Santa Sabina College, New South Wales. St Mary's Anglican Girls School, Western Australia. Mansfield State High School. fancy. I feel like we're in Hollywood right now. <laughs> um, this is definitely a big thank you to my wonderful film colleagues and Narelle Richards who had our students this year for grade 11 and 12. Uh, I think we come from different backgrounds but I feel like we have a bit of a Captain Planet situation happening where by our powers combined we make a pretty awesome film department. And thank you to Bond University of course for putting this on and also the Australian Teachers of Media Association. I feel like us film teachers have a lot of support there and I thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Scott Knight, I'm Head of Cinema Studies here at Bond University. Hi, my name is Darren Fisher and I'm Head of Directing here at Bond University. Hello, my name is Michael Sergi and I'm the Director of Film and Television here at Bond. This tip that I want to give you today is about camera selection, approaching film style, preparation, overlapping action when it comes to editing your film, to properly prepare in terms of selecting your location, selecting your cast, selecting your crew and selecting your equipment. A lot of people, when they, they look at cameras, they get very obsessed with resolution. Is it, is it standard definition or high definition? Most projectors in the cinema, you'll find actually a 2K. So shooting anything more than that is no one will ever see anyway. When you're telling a story, you need to use cinematic language to communicate your ideas and the emotion that's at the heart of your film. So overlapping action is an actor does some action, some motion, has a line of dialogue in one shot and you make sure that they do exactly the same thing in the next shot. And the best way to do that is to have your actors do overlapping action. So best of luck and I look forward to seeing your, uh, your film soon. Good luck. I 
just think it's amazing that the BAFTAs are put together by the first year students. I mean, I, this is my second BAFTA, and I just find it staggering. First year students who put together the show worked really, really hard considering that there's been very, very little sleep. Look the camera, look at the camera. <laughs> there he is. We're just packing up at the end of BAFTA here. Had a really great production, a really good crew. Beyond anything else, the crew worked together, they communicated and... Tonight is very different in that it wasn't a ceremony per se, but it was a show. It was a fully produced show. The crew did a, a phenomenal job. I mean, 11 weeks they've got to sort of put it all together, learn everything. I mean, some people walk in and they don't have any idea of what even a DA, what a prompter is. So for a, like for what, for what the crew's pulled off, it's absolutely exceptional. And every year it gets bigger and better, so really happy. Ah, uh, amazing night, a completely amazing night. A, a lot of the, the finalists who came here and their parents had no idea what to expect and when they walked into the room and they saw the event, they were just like completely blown away. Like Buffton is a major event. Filmmaking is your passion, and you just need to keep making films. Keep making films, keep making television, just get involved. And, you know, don't wait for it to come to you, go out there and grab it. What are we expecting for next year? Next year? You're thinking about next year already? I'm not. Bond, and I'm an AP for the BAFTA show. Let's go take a look around. As you can see, this is the kitchen. In here we have our ingest station. Meet Scott. He's our news operator for the show. Yep. Got some stuff to do? Yeah. Yeah, cool. So this is where we ingest all of our footage when we do our films to make sure that it's all working properly and then if we save it on these computers, we can access them from all different computers around Bond. Okay, come through this way and we'll have a look at the audio room. Just make sure it's all working perfectly. Yeah? Yeah, all good. Cool. Just in this room here, you can see this is where we do all the voiceover stuff. Awesome. Follow me, guys. Right in here is our studio floor. so that we can simulate any kind of TV environment that we need. All the equipment stays in here. Just in here we have our control room. Where all the editing's done. This is Liz, Christian, Sam. They're all a bit busy, but say hi guys. so that we know when we're supposed to be getting everyone from their seats to present so they get the opportunity. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Yeah, what do we hashtag? Hashtag buff for 2013. Awesome, thanks. What are you doing? Um, just rendering some of my music clip. Yeah, cool. Music video. I can play you some if you want. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, cool. Show us something. Room to go. The cable room. Hey. Any 
Anything we should be concerned about, Scott? All gone well? Yeah, no, it's all good. All good here. Okay. Thanks for taking a look around, guys. We'll see you at the Bofta Show. I would make all the magic faraway tree from skin to a film. I'd probably make my version of Batman and put me as every single character. I'd make a feature film where all the characters were pandas. I would probably find a documentary of my life because it's so interesting. I would do a remake of Pride and Prejudice set in space starring Dwayne Johnson, Sigourney Weaver and Bill Murray. I would make Romeo and Juliet to The Resurrection starring Bill Murray as Juliet. What are you doing, mate? This F3 was due back two weeks ago. I can't return her. What do you mean you can't return it? Because someone socially responsible needs to look after her. Give it to me! That's okay. You're home now. Yeah, ooh. Hey, good daddy. That's a girl. Where's your camera? Where's your camera? Where's your camera? Where's your camera? <laughs> Ben, write down everything that I say. So if you want to write a story or script that has a clever ending, you want to make use of something called a plant. A plant is a particular detail that at the time seems to be insignificant, but can later on have major ramifications for the story. Did you get all that down, Ben? Huh? Yeah. By the way, this has nothing to do with anything, but uh, did you get the extra camera batteries? Is that a plant? Crossing the line. It's a good rule of thumb not to do it. When you're filming a conversation between two people, always keep the camera on the one side. So when you do shot reverse shot, person one stays on one side of the frame. And the other person is on the other side of the frame. And it looks like we're facing each other. Yeah. But if you cross the line... Then it just looks like we're facing the same way. And then things start to get weird. Yeah. When it comes to putting your film together, continuity editing is a good technique to use. If you don't cut in the action, your edits tend to look clumsy and noticeable. But when you do cut in the action, the edit between shots tends to be more invisible. What do you think, Tom? I think we should always cut on the action. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back your host, James Matheson. All right, hopefully you're fed and watered and you've dashed to the loo. We're over here, everyone. We're not on the stage. We're back at the BAFTA hub, the actual core of where everything is happening. And uh, Kylie Agnew is with us from Mansfield State High. Um, you may have noticed they won the Best School Award. Was that a thrill for you guys? I'm so excited right now. You could probably tell I was shaking up there. So excited. Mm, I thought you might have been hyperglycemic or something, but no, you were just very nervous. No, just very nervous. And now, uh, tell us a little bit about the film program at Mansfield State High. Uh, we've been building it up over the last few years. When I started there seven years ago, we had year 11 and 12 film and TV, and we've been able to add year 9 and 10 along with that as well. And as our school keeps growing, we get more film classes, and we'll be looking at almost 3,000 students next year. So we're working hard. Amazing. Now, a lot of people say when they come to an event like this and they watch the caliber of films that it's quite a surprise to them. You wouldn't be as shocked because you'd see the sort of creative processes that your students come up with and the capability of people that are actually quite young. Yeah, and I think also as technology gets more affordable as well and we're able to build our resources at school, students have access to um, more technology. But I think storytelling is the main point and that doesn't change. And what would you say to young people who are watching or people in the room about studying film or even TV as a potential career? Well, I think film and TV is involved in almost every career these days. You know, even if you're a real estate person, you need to make videos to sell a house. So I think being involved in technology is the way forward. Okay, all right, that's enough from you. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Please give a round of applause to Kylie. And of course, to Mansfield State High. Thank you.
Must be a very proud moment for you. Oh, it's so proud. Yeah, amazing stuff. And uh, keep at it if you're a school who wants to get involved. Obviously, next year is our 25th year of the BAFTAs, so we're going to continue to raise the bar even more. The next category we're going to do is very close to my heart. I've worked in music TV for about 10 years on Foxtel, and for a lot of those years, I was introducing and talking about music videos. So this is the next category of tonight, is the best music video. Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Music Video, please welcome the Production Secretary on the new Australian feature film, Streamline, and Bond Film and Television alumnus, Emily Goretto. Music videos are a magical collaboration between the music and film industries. Combining music's powerful audio experience with film's visual storytelling creates an experience like no other. The Best Achievement in Music Video Award goes to the nominee who enhanced a song via captivating visual experience. Nominees, I encourage you to continue to create amazing visual art pieces and to have fun while doing it. The nominees for Best Music Video. Aviva Blackout by Ben Gimby from Mandurah Catholic College, Western Australia. White Knuckles by Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School, Queensland. Matilda by Jemima Patch Taylor from St. Rita's College, Queensland. This is from Matilda. And the award goes to. Jemima Patch Taylor from St. Rita's College in Queensland. Accepting the award on behalf of Jemima Patch Taylor, please welcome Declan Delaney. Um, sorry, I'm actually Jordan White, um, but um, on behalf of Jemima Patch Taylor, um, she would like to uh, thank. Uh, Bond University and also all the generous sponsors from tonight um, and to also acknowledge all of the roles in her film so all the actors that were present um, and also she'd like to thank myself so um, if you're watching Jemima she's actually in New Zealand at the moment so if you're watching hello um, thank you um, but yes um, this I um, have been a part of her creative process and I've, it's amazing watching her turn a story that's actually quite gruesome into something so beautiful and ethereal. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, um, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Let's watch Jemima's film. This is wrong, this is wrong, this 
Kisses from Matilda Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Sound, please welcome the Head of Directing at Bond University, Darren Fisher. Hello. Sound is just as important as vision. Great sound design adds to a film's atmosphere, narrative, and can truly make a scene. From the crunching of leaves, selecting epic scores, the Best Sound Award, recognizing the talented sound designers who have an exceptional ear for audio the ability to craft incredible sound that enhances the visual experience of a film is vital to emotionally impact an audience. The nominees for Best Achievement in Sound are Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School in Queensland for his film Mates, Emma Russell from Hunting Tower School in Victoria for her film Mark and Fish, and Susanna Steele from Santa Sabina College in New South Wales for her film Voir le Voir. And the winner is 
Susanna Steele from Santa Sabina College in New South Wales for her film Bois Le Bois. I came up here like before. Um, well, um, I just want to say a huge thank you to my teacher, um, Mr. Walker, for encouraging me to change my music. Because um, <laughs> it was originally going to be fashion music, and then he encouraged me to change it to horror music, and I was completely against the idea at first, but now I'm so relieved that. <laughs> He <laughs> um, suggested that, and again, thanks to Bond University. Thank you. To me, BAFTA is a great experience for our students to get to know what it's like putting a show together that has both a live and a broadcast component. From the start, they put all the elements together from script writing, rundowns, to be able to pitch in creative ideas to us and the Bond staff, um, marketing departments, executive producers, in order to put this great show together. I'm super excited to be the producer of BAFTA this year. It's an amazing opportunity and experience and I've got to work with an incredible bunch of people to put this show together. It's taken an immense amount of planning, but I'm super excited to see it all come together and for the nominees to enjoy their special night. Directing broadcast TV is vastly different to directing feature films, because in broadcast TV, the decisions have to be made live, so if any problems arise, you have to think of a solution there and then. Unlike in feature films, where you can do more of a gradual process. But that's where I think the adrenaline and excitement really comes from, so every take is different. The amount of work that goes into this, it's nothing like anything that I've done before. I think it's a really great way to prepare myself for the real thing. BAFTA is a really, really collaborative process. For me, doing lighting, I need to match the graphics perfectly. If it doesn't match, it all falls apart. It's been every day, every chance I get in this TV studio with some lights on the ground, getting those colours exactly right, and it's going to come together and look amazing. For me, BAFTA has been all about organising to make the show run smoothly for the production crew, but also for the people in the audience as well, and for our nominees. I'm super excited to see what BAFTA brings this year and all the amazing new talent that comes from all the different entrants. It's an incredible opportunity and the start of their new film journey. Brilliant stuff there from an incredible team of students putting this whole thing together from the lighting to the camera to the audio. It has been an incredible exercise of teamwork, commitment and positivity. How good have the films been tonight, hey? An incredibly high standard. There's still a few more to come. Lots of diversity, lots of amazing creativity, lots of death and murder as well. So really super upbeat, really positive stuff from the kids this year. Um, they seem to be doing just fine. <laughs> now, as we saw in that video, there's producers, there's executive producers, and there's also directors, but you don't see the directors and the team who actually mixes and puts it to air in this room. In fact, you can find them as part of our BAFTA hub as we have a look at what's in store in and around the auditorium. There's some shots of actually putting together the event. This is camera nine, which is... Where's camera nine? Oh, is that you there? No. Oh, it is. Hey, how are you going? Um, it's Cass, our producer. That's the tech ops. Super fascinating there. Yep. So, wait, give us a wave again. Okay, that's your 15 minutes up. And there's camera eight. Hello, how are you? Having the time of your life? And let's check in, though, with what we spoke about before. The control room, it's George, the director and the crew. How are you going, team? Yeah, we're going well, thanks, James. How are you going? We're really good. Everyone's feeling pumped. We've got a handful of awards still to come. Tell us what happens in the control room and a little bit about your team there. 
Well, so next to me, we've got Marley, who's the vision switcher, who controls what camera is on at what time. Then to my left, we have Shay, who is our DA, or director's assistant. And next to her on graphics, we've got Logan and Jordy. And then at the very end, we actually have the 2018 BAFTA overall winner, Charlie Falconer. Hey, Charlie. There you go. And who's this anonymous handsome bastard up the back there? Uh, <laughs> up in the corner, we have our executive producer, Christian Shepard. And also behind me, off camera, we have our amazing audio team, Francis, who was the multi-camera director of BAFTA last year as well. And we also have Heidi. Okay, looks like they're working. <laughs> Really? <laughs> um, and tell us what the experience has been like, as you saw in that video of yourself. You talked about <laughs> the high pace and the decision making you have to make as the director. What's been the biggest challenge in putting a live performance like this together? Oh, definitely all the curveballs that you can never plan for and just being able to adapt and think on your toes, really, and make sure the show runs smoothly. But it's been a great experience so far. Okay, well, what we might do now is we might get you to actually throw to the next nominations package and you show people exactly what's involved once they're in the control room. Yeah, I'd love to. So I thought I'd show you guys how we actually transition into a craft award. So we have the directing award transition queue in three, two, one, go. Take nine. Take ready one. Presenting the award for best achievement in directing, Please welcome previous BAFTA Overall Filmmaker Scholarship winners, Harry Weston and Charlie Falconer. Good evening and welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and our incredibly talented BAFTA nominees. In 2017, I was fortunate enough to win the Best Overall Filmmaker Award, as well as the Award for Best Directing, which I have the privilege of awarding to someone tonight. Calm down there, Harry. I also won the Best Overall Filmmaker Award as well as the Best, Best Directing Award last year. And I'm actually controlling the cameras that people are seeing you on tonight. Uh, righto. But uh, <laughs> did you win the award for Best Sound Design? Oh man, you've won up to me there. And I mean, who's actually on stage presenting the award? <laughs> Well, since you're there, um, you can. Uh, I'm busy in the control room. <laughs> All right, well, considering you're not here doing this, how about you announce the nominees for this award? Sounds great. <laughs> the nominees for the Best Directing Award is Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School, Catherine Shepherd from St. Mary's Anglican Girls School, and Henry Johnston from Scotch College. Thank you. And the award for best directing goes to Henry Johnston from Scotch College in Victoria for his film Sally Jones, An Australian Farmer. Um, this time, I'd just like to thank my support team. I've had an amazing support team right from when I started the film in about February this year. So that's my media teachers at Scotch, Michael War, Jamison Kane, and Miss Wilson. Thank you for all your help throughout the year. You provided me with the best possible equipment, the best possible advice, and I can't be thankful enough for that. Also to my family as well. My mother's here tonight. Thank you for all your support um, and putting education as your number one priority. I thank you very much. Um, and I'm having a great night. Hope you all are too. Thank you. Well done, mate. doing the tour around the school and seeing the media department and I instantly fell in love. Just, I think it's an amazing opportunity to have other people watch my film. Just want to learn how to become a better filmmaker to be honest. It's also just been cool to meet a bunch of other people. Meet everyone. I love meeting all these new people. Actually making some friends through the experience is really nice. Well, I think it's kind of just the uh, the love of storytelling. And, and like just create things that everyone can enjoy. I think I'd like to go to university, try a bit of everything and see how I go from there. Well I want to be a teacher and I'd love to teach media as a subject. Our students put on a very professional show. I think it's a really authentic experience for students. Any experience that you can get uh, at 
any age is always going to help you with your future works. An amazing experience. Look forward to it every every year. Bruce, there's nothing like BAFTA that's done in any other film school or any other university in Australia. Presenting the award for Best Achievement in Screenwriting, please welcome film and television screenwriter Evelyn Saunders. Good evening. Nothing both excites and scares a screenwriter more than a blank page. But that's where it all begins, a blank page. Writers are the poets of the film industry, intelligent, creative and invaluable. Just like the screenwriter who wrote this intro, they're truly geniuses. No matter how much money you spend on a film, no matter what talent you find or what camera you use, it's a great story that audiences crave. And the nominees for Best Achievement in Screenwriting for the awards tonight are... Oh. Sorry, I'm back. Austin <laughs> McFarlane for um, uh, Anglican Church Grammar School in Queensland for his film Mates. Catherine Shepherd from St Mary's Anglican Girls School in Western Australia for her film I Need Space. Curtis Charlton from Mansfield State High School in Queensland for his film Ultimatum. And the award goes to... Catherine Shepherd for I Need Space. mum and dad who knew watching that many films would pay off. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, mum, I guess, and Annie Kel for um, sitting in the car whilst I said bok choy and it came into my head and they said, yeah, that would work. Um, so yes, and thank you to my actors as well for kind of ad-libbing a little bit as well on set. We had a bit of fun with that, with comedy. So yes, thank you to everyone. <laughs> Now I see the light, I know what's right 
Come on, everyone! Was it me? Was it you? Was it someone else? Was this heartache meant to be? Should have known all along that you'd up and leave Cause you had no respect for me All the promises that you made Began to slowly fade But now I see the light Here we go! Hold my own tonight, yeah! What happened to the trust? What happened to the love? What happened, baby? Can you tell me now? What happened to the trust? What happened to the love? What happened, baby? Can you tell me now? What happened to the trust? What happened to the love? What happened, baby? Can you tell me now? What happened to the trust? What happened to the love? What happened? Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> some catchy stuff there, Steph. Um, now, you were a student at Bond, is that right? Yes, Bond University, woo! <laughs> oh, wow. uh, now, you were also a singer. You studied what here? I studied a Bachelor of Communication and I majored in Journalism. Fantastic. And yeah. apparently you've got a new life ahead of you. You're about to move to Melbourne. You were going to go a few weeks ago, but Bond said, can you stay? And you were happy to oblige. Well, actually, um, Bond didn't know and we stayed in particular for this event. We didn't want to miss it. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad to have you tonight. I'm glad you could stay and watch all the amazing films. The Calibre has been incredible. I'm sure you'll agree. Yes, definitely. I've loved all the movies, even that weird experimental shit, um, <laughs> which I don't understand, but um, I could be getting old. Uh, as well, so there's that as well. Just kidding, very, very clever, very creative stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, we run out of time for any more votes in the Red Bull People's Choice competition. Hopefully you've got your votes in. There was your chance to have the power in your hands. We've only got a handful of more awards before we get to the big one, which is that huge scholarship. So one more time, please thank Steph, and let's get to the Red Bull People's Choice Award. Presenting the Red Bull People's Choice Award, please welcome the production coordinator on Stan's biggest ever original series, The Commons, and Bond film and television alumnus, Aaron Cutts. The votes are in for the Red Bull People's Choice Award. Huge thank you to those who voted. I'm sure the nominees appreciate your support. Everyone who voted has contributed to fulfilling a student's dream, and we can't wait to unveil the winner of the Red Bull People's Choice Award. The nominees for the Red Bull People's Choice Award are Ebony Cunningham for Terra Nullius, Henry Johnson for Sally Jones, Oliver John for Australia High, and the award for the Red Bull People's Choice Award goes to Ebony Cunningham for Terra Nullius. Oh my gosh, I'm speechless. Um, thank you everyone who voted, it really means the world to me. I'd love to thank my parents, thanks for listening to all my crazy ideas over the years. <laughs> my beautiful friend Lila Wosley, who um, I'm lucky enough to have here tonight. My actor, I really couldn't have done it without you. And my gorgeous teacher, Mr McLeod, Stevie Mac. I couldn't have done it without you either. You've taught me so much about media and just life in general, and you are amazing. <laughs> so thank you so much.
back up the house when you stop pretending you're not our daughter. Don't call me Jess. I'm not your daughter. Presenting the Dean's Choice Award, please welcome the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Society and Design, Professor Derek Carson. Working at Bond University it really is a, a, a wonderful place to work, and uh, being the Executive Dean of such a, a wonderful faculty really is a privilege. And we, we get, as Executive Dean, you, you get to do a number of great things throughout the year, uh, but one of the, the real treats is that you get to, uh, you get to decide who wins the Dean's Award. Uh, and it's actually one of the, uh, the, the easier um, uh, awards that we've got to, uh, uh, awards that we award this evening, because th there's no real um, rubric that we have to follow, there's no rules and so on. You just, you're just asked to sit down and pick the film that you enjoyed the most. And that's indeed what, what I did. In fact, uh, it's wrong for me to say what I did, uh, it's what myself and my wife did, because as soon as the, the 18 finalists were actually uh, announced, then we booked the, the screening room across in the uh, Bond University Screen Queensland hub, and we sat down and we watched all the films and we loved it. And, um, uh, and in that room, something wonderful actually happened, something very surprising happened, um, and that is that 
Um, and you've got to remember, we're, we're married about 22 years, we've been together about 25 years, and it doesn't happen very often, uh, and that is we were in complete agreement <laughs> as to which of these films should actually uh, not only win, but which of these films should be nominated. Uh, and the, the film that we chose, uh, and we, we did choose it together, uh, is, a, is a wonderful film, um, and we, we chose it because uh, it's a, for us it's a film that had a, a particular message, and indeed we believe the film actually had a, a number of messages, and it was beautiful short, very sensitively short, and we actually think it actually had a, 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 not only a strong theme, but also a, an Australian theme to it as well. Um, so before I go on to announce the winner, uh, the nominees for the 2019's Dean's Choice Award are... Sally Jones, an Australian farmer, by Henry Johnston from Scotch College, Victoria. Um, I had this absolute desire to want to create some positivity out of my loss and my tragedy and Gippsland Jersey was birthed. When starting a business it was, um, if we didn't know how to do something we simply googled. The Call of the Wild by Jemima Patch Taylor from St Rita's College, Queensland. and Fish by Emma Russell from Hunting Tower School, Victoria. And uh, the the winner of the 2019 uh, Dean's Award, and th this was actually a film that absolutely grabbed our attention right from the moment it started, right through to the credits, and actually beyond the credits. So my congratulations to all, but certainly to congratulations to tonight's winner of Dean's Award, and that is Henry Johnson from Scotch College of Victoria for Sally Jones, an Australian farmer. Firstly, thank you to Dean for choosing um, the film. I'm really just honoured just to be here up in Queensland uh, representing Sally's story. And on behalf of this award, I'd just really like to pay a little tribute to the rural community, especially, who have just been behind my film right from the start. It's appeared in um, little bulletins in rural newspapers and local country papers and things like that. And, it's really shown, uh, I, I partnered actually with a non-for-profit organisation called Rural Minds, focusing on mental health, and we released the film on Facebook on World Mental Health Day, and even in the comments of that video, just seeing how touched people were by this film um, is something that I'm really honoured and proud by. So, especially to the dairy farmers who are undergoing sort of the enduring dairy, dairy milk price crises, um, and as well as I hopefully paid homage to um, the sort of Australian story of women on, in the land, which is sort of my original tension as well. So thank you, and I hope you all enjoyed uh, tonight. Presenting the jury prize, please welcome back the Director of Film, Screen and Creative Media, Associate Professor Michael Sergi. We're nearly at the end of the evening. It's been a wonderful night, right? Yeah. yeah. So, the jury prize. The jury prize is a prestigious award 
that comes with a partial scholarship to study the Bachelor of Film and Television here at Bond University. The jury prize recognises a young filmmaker whose work has exhibited outstanding potential, a young filmmaker who is a genuine rising star. Selecting the nominees for this year was incredibly difficult as the overall quality of the films, as you've all seen tonight, was exceptional. And so the nominees for this year's jury prize are... Curtis Charlton from Mansfield State High School, Queensland. Ashley, what's yours? I'm Dan. Well, Dan, mind if I sit? Sure, you can sit now. <laughs> ben Gimby from Mandurah Catholic College, Western Australia. Karina Sarong from Marymount College, Queensland. Um, such a beautiful person, even though she's not here, and it's wonderful to see on a daily basis how strong your connection with her is. Love the photo because it's just the whole family. Catherine Shepherd from St Mary's Anglican Girls School, Western Australia. Hey, this is why we need to relationship rebuild in the first place. just to show that it was real. <laughs> Catherine Shepherd. like to say thank you so much for that. Um, bon, this is an amazing opportunity. And who knew Michaela out there somewhere watching this that your um, physical comedy would get me this far? <laughs> so uh, thank you for that. After award in 2011, I, I took 12 months off first and I went to Borneo and worked on a documentary there. Then I came to Bond. I've produced two films, including one of the graduating films, and I probably never would have come to Bond if it wasn't for winning that award at Buffalo, so I'm super grateful. Bond University is a really incredible university in the sense that it really prepares its students for the real world of filmmaking. After winning BAFTA last year and getting a full scholarship to study at Bond, I've learned so much. Across my time here, I've been able to study such things like cinematography, editing and screenwriting, and it's really helped me understand the level of industry professionalism, as well as becoming very comfortable with the equipment that we use on set. I really enjoyed my time at Bond University. Um, when you go through film school, it's really an opportunity for you to get down into the nuts and bolts of the craft and maybe try a few things out creatively that you don't get to in the real world. Well, since winning the Buffer Award in 2005, I came to the uni in 06, 07 and um, produced a number of films. My graduation film, Animal Instincts, was a stop motion animation. Since then, it's gone on to have over a million views on YouTube and been in uh, numerous film festivals around the world. I still work with people that study in my cohort. There's a lot of good collaborations that have come out of my, my class and studying at Bond. I've almost finished my time here at Bond and now that I'm coming towards the end, I feel really comfortable in that regardless of where my career takes me, I'll be able to cope with it. So if you're a student that's about to or you're currently studying film, I would really suggest that you obviously work hard and don't be afraid to Try some things that are new, make films that are a bit strange while you have the chance, and also really value your relationships. You can't make a film by yourself. 
and you'll never be able to. Find that crew that you can really work with and don't let them go. Presenting the Buffed Best Overall Filmmaker Scholarship Award, please welcome back your host, James Matheson. for a year surround, saving orangutans in Borneo and then I had a million people watch my video and then I went some awards and then I produced a major motion picture. Oh yeah, I'm 19. <sighs> Good way to make us feel all a little bit inadequate. Um, but that is just the calibre of students who are coming through and some of the incredible pedigree of some of our past winners. You've been super patient tonight. We've seen some incredible films but right now it is time for that big one. The last award of the night, it is the BAFTA Best Overall Filmmaker. Now, this award is a scholarship award and for a lot of people who've won this in the past, it has been literally life-changing. Uh, it's allowed them to have access to a career in filmmaking and a pathway to fulfilling their dreams in writing and creating film. So, the winner will not only win the prize, but they'll also get a full tuition scholarship to study the Bachelor of Film and Television right here at Bond University. A full scholarship, so it's an extraordinary prize. This award isn't technical, nor is it genre-based. This award goes to the filmmaker themselves, not for their film, but it's recognition of creativity, talent, ingenuity, perseverance, and a filmmaker who has gone above and beyond. We believe that this particular filmmaker's passion was clearly evident in their work and they demonstrated an unrivaled commitment, dedication, ambition and that just extra special something that sometimes you just can't put your finger on. So, to help us with the nominees of Best Overall Filmmaker Scholarship, we might... Uh, oh no, I'm going to read them out. Shall I read them out? No, I'll read them out. <coughs> that was going so well. The nominees for Best Overall Filmmaker are Ebony Cunningham from St. Mary's Anglican Girls' School, New South Wales, NWA. Yes. Henry Johnson from Scots College, Victoria. Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School in Queensland. And finally, Susanna Steele from Santa Sabina College in New South Wales. <laughs> but before we get to the winner, I might welcome back to the stage to help me with that announcement, Professor Derek Carson. <clears throat> So thank you, James. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to keep the suspense going just a, a, a little bit longer because <laughs> I'd like to say, uh, uh, make a few acknowledgements and thanks uh, this evening. Uh, first of all, uh, th th this evening would not have happened if all around Australia, um, school children, uh, uh, school teachers, school principals and so on, uh, did not decide to get together to put the effort into making these wonderful films submitting the films and coming to join us here in Bond. So to every single person uh, uh, here this evening who's a nominee, to everyone at home uh, who perhaps uh, submitted a film, thank you. We could not do BAFTA without you. So thank you very much for that. And the other thing I'd like to, um, uh, just, just to remind us again, we, we, we've made reference to it a few times this evening. Uh, earlier on when we saw the, uh, the film of Behind Bufta. Now remember, this entire evening has been put on by our students, ably supported by our, our, our staff members. But here at Bond, our size and the relationships we have with students enable us to do things just a little bit differently. Uh, we pride ourselves in offering very active, authentic, engaged forms of learning, uh, and that type of pedagogy has been on, uh, on display here this evening. 
Um, just remind yourself, this is actually a classroom. The 50 students who are all contributing to this, this is part of their, um, their, their curriculum, it's part of their assessment and so on. And uh, I, for one, think they've absolutely uh, demonstrated a, a great deal of professionalism this evening and have actually uh, served us all very well, so thank you for that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for all, uh, as I say, school teachers and friends and family who have come along to, to, to support everyone this evening. Thank you to our sponsors. Uh, we, again, we couldn't uh, put on this event without you. Uh, thank you to all the presenters. And James, last year I forgot to thank you personally, so thank you very much, everyone. Give James a round of applause for giving such a, a wonderful show. But now, with no further ado, uh, it gives me an immense pleasure to announce the winner of the 2019 uh, Best Filmmaker uh, here at BAFTA, and of course, the, uh, the, the full scholarship to come and join the 50 students that we have here uh, studying film and television. And the winner is Austin McFarlane from Anglican Church Grammar School in Queensland. Okay, so I know I speak on behalf of all the finalists here when I'd say thank you, Bond, thank you, BAFTA, thank you to all the sponsors. It's not often you come across an event like this where the students, the staff, they all just have such a passion in providing this platform for all of young filmmakers to show their work, demonstrate their work. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, my FTV teacher, once again, he introduced this back to me in year nine. I never would have thought that I'd be here. Thanks, mum and dad, for helping me along the way. Um, and I hope to see all other finalists uh, here at Bond next year. Uh, but regardless, uh, I wish you luck in your endeavors. Um, but yeah, thank you all for coming out here. Uh, I'm very humbled to accept this award. Thank you very much. <laughs> So again, uh, I'd just like to pass on my congratulations uh, to, to Austin. But again, my, my congratulations to every single person uh, who was a nominee here this evening. As Austin said, you don't have to be the winner of the full scholarship to come and join us here at Bond. I hope many of you do. And if you choose that another uh, school is uh, better uh, fits your, your aspirations and so on, then we wish you well uh, in, in your endeavors. When you go to, uh, to thank people, you always um, there's always one person or one group of people that you, you miss out. And I, it was really wrong of me to miss out one people. Because I, I spoke about our students who, who, put, who were on a wonderful show here this evening. Um, and I very briefly said, and they were ably supported by our staff. But actually, could I just have one last round of applause for my absolute amazing faculty uh, who who week in, week out, put in a huge amount of effort, uh, are really passionate about what they do, and uh, not only do they want to teach our curriculum to students, they want our students to, uh, to achieve. They want our students to, uh, to achieve the goals that they want to do, and everything that they do um, is governed by that passion for students. So you can all put your hands together for the faculty staff. Thank you. Fantastic stuff. All right. That's it for this evening. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for clapping politely through the entire two hours. Uh, thank you to the Dean. After parties at Dean's Place. Is that still happening? No, it's not, apparently. Um, but it's schoolies is on. So uh, parents, make sure you keep your kids in your accommodation this evening. Kids, this is the night. <laughs> See what it's all about. What's all the fuss about? Um, no, don't do that. That's ridiculous. Um, uh, drink responsibly. Uh, it's been a massive night. Thank you, as I said, to all you guys for your patience and attentiveness. A big thanks to all our crew and all our students who put this together. And, of course, the students who submitted the films. An event like this can't happen without you actually doing the work, coming up with the ideas and actually putting the time in to bring them to fruition. So a massive, massive congratulations to them. Um, and to all our winners, congratulations to our nominees. Bad luck, but 
the fact that you got to this level shows that you have something very, very special considering how many films were submitted. Um, we encourage you to keep pushing forward, keep pushing the envelope and coming out with new and innovative ideas. Um, that's it from us. Good luck as you continue your journey to the silver screen or maybe even the small screen as you see fit. Uh, we can't forget to, to mention tonight's sponsors, of course, for sponsoring tonight's awards. We couldn't have done it without you. This is the 24th annual BAFTA Gala Awards. Next year is our 25th anniversary, so hopefully we see you, some of you back then. I'd like to thank, just before we go, our judges, our crew, Bond staff and all the volunteers. Uh, the creation of this night couldn't happen without those volunteers, so it really is massive to thank them. Uh, but that's it from us. Uh, if you're watching at home on the broadcast, we really appreciate you tuning in. And to everyone who put in those sleepless nights and those long weekends and the people who work here at BAFTA, it really is an epic event and uh, we have not forgotten your dedication to the cause. So wherever you are in the room, if you're in the room, if you're somewhere in Australia, if you're watching overseas, we have to say uh, good night and hopefully we see you at the 25th annual BAFTA gala ceremony next year. So from us, it is goodbye, good morning, wherever you are in the world, good afternoon maybe, and uh, see you next year. Thanks again. <laughs>